Hi guys, this is Christina. Uh, I just want to share with you my experiences and tips and hopefully to encourage you in your recovery for your hysterectomy. Um, this is day seven for me after my abdominal hysterectomy. I basically had a large fibroid and the, um, the report just came back where they examined it, which I didn't even know they were doing. Uh, so it was two and a half pounds, just over one kilogram. Uh, 25 centimeters by 13 by 14 centimeters. It was pretty large, so they had to take it out. So basically, they took my uterus out, my tubes, the cervix. Um, basically, everything except the ovaries is now gone. Uh, so this is day seven. I'm doing really well, surprisingly. I did watch a lot of videos before that. That kind of scared me and freaked me out. A bunch of YouTube videos of other experiences. Um, I would kind of advise against watching too many of them. It's nice to have a heads up on certain things, but um, I just want to let you know how this has been going and maybe some of the things I have done um, have helped with that. So I, I, I did make some notes because I don't want to miss anything and I want this video to be really short and to the point. So I was in the hospital for two nights uh, there's no complications so far. Uh, the surgery was really, really smooth. I've had two previous C-sections, and so the incision from the hysterectomy is right over that old incision. It's just a little bit longer. It's horizontal, just a little bit longer to the right and to the left of it. Uh, there was no staples this time, uh, just tape. Um, so I have almost no pain right now. I'm not on any pain. I'm not on strong pain medication. I'm just taking ibuprofen. I'm not doing the um, hydromorphine that they gave me originally as a prescription and in the hospital. That was only for the first three to four days. After that, I didn't need it. Once I got home, I only took it one time. And I'm not even doing the Tylenol. I'm only doing Advil and the stronger ibuprofen that they prescribed for me. Um, there's no other medication that I'm doing. Uh, today, I was able to actually fix my own lunch in the kitchen. So I was standing for 30 to 40 minutes, which is the longest time yet for me. And I felt good, except that I got back pain, like upper back pain after that. Uh, so I had to sit down, but the incision wise and the pain there, the abdominal was fine. It was fine. Just don't bend over. If you have to bend over, just squat, uh, bend your knees, but not don't bend over at the waist. I was also able to sit at my laptop today and do a little bit of work. What helped me is putting a footstool under my desk so I can fully put my feet up. Uh, so almost like I'm sitting at the couch basically, but at my desk. Uh, so I was able to do that for one or two hours today, which was awesome because I had to do some work. Um, I'm able to shower completely independently uh, and normally. I'm just not shaving my legs. I'm not doing that yet. Um, the first day when we came home from the hospital, I was in the hospital for two nights. So the first day after I took a shower, my husband helped me a bit. He was in the shower with me, but I still did most of the work. So that it was fine to do that. I wasn't super difficult. Uh, the most helpful thing that I could say for everyone is to eat well in terms of fiber. If you eat lots of fiber and you don't eat junk food and you don't eat too many starches, you should be able to go to the washroom with help of laxatives if you have to. I didn't really have to do that. Um, if you don't, it's just going to cause so much pain and so much other problems. So eating healthy is like number one and also resting. Don't overdo it the first few days. Don't try to be a hero and walk around too much. Even if you feel better because it's just going to exhaust you. It's good to walk, but don't overdo it. So before the surgery, if you can stock up your fridge on fresh salads, Anything else healthy, you can put in your cupboards. I wanted to make my own, um, cook my own food to freeze it so I can have it handy after, but I wasn't able to do that because we just moved houses one week before the surgery, so it was very crazy at home. But I wanted to make my uh, home-cooked uh, chicken soup and freeze it in a jar, which I've done before. 
So if you can do something like this, it will be helpful. You definitely need a person with you for the first five to seven days. Like first one week, you need somebody at home bringing you food, bringing you drinks, doing the laundry, doing all these things. Um, don't eat too much at one time, even if you're pretty hungry and it's good food it doesn't matter if you, the, I ate too much the second day after the surgery and I got well too much but even too much for that time like I got bloated and so the worst pain I would say of the whole experience is the gas pain the incision pain is helped with the, the prescription the morphine whatever they give you that will be helped with that but the gas pain doesn't really subside much from that. And the only way to get rid of it is to pass gas. That was the biggest sort of accomplishment that I, that I had the first in the beginning. When I passed gas, I felt so much better. Uh, the, the gas pain, though, stayed for the first five to six days. The worst of it was the second day. Um, the first day you don't really feel it as much yet. You're still under all these painkillers. The second day, um, when you start eating and everything, and all of a sudden you feel this pain everywhere in your abdominals, like tons of little knives, like little pins and things. It, it, it's really bad. And I don't remember having anything like this during my C-section, my two C-sections before. So I was kind of taken by surprise by it. Like I knew people talked about it, but I just didn't know how bad it is. And the only way really you're able to pass gas, or I was able to pass gas for the first few days and even now, is by standing up. You have to stand up. I cannot do it when I'm lying down. The muscles are not strong enough yet. Standing up and for as long as you can, walk around a bit, lean over a chair or your sink or something, and try to push that gas out when it comes. Um, drinking a lot of tea is also very helpful, or coffee. Something warm always helps you go. I was able to go number two on the third day. It took quite a while sitting on the toilet. And I had to do a jiggle and wiggle and had to shake back and forth sideways to help it come out. It took a long, long time, but I was persistent. But don't strain yourself, don't push too hard. But if you feel it's there, if, if one wants to come out, it still didn't just didn't want to come out because again, the muscle isn't there to push it out. So it was just a lot of work. Um, I took laxative a couple of times, two very small pills. It was a very mild laxative. I don't think it did much because I had already gone to the washroom by myself before that. But I, I just took it just in case. And I would, I would advise doing that. Um, I'm just looking at my notes. Um, one important thing that you should get before the surgery is get underwear that is loose and it's very high. It's high waist maybe kind of like close to your belly button, around your belly button, actually mine is, I think, yeah, around, right around the belly button, kind of like grandma underwear. It's cotton, preferably, so you don't get any yeast infections from nylon. Um, so I just got a pack of that. You don't want to be wearing bikinis or anything low that will be, you know, piercing or pressing on your incision or on your swollen abdomen. Your abdomen is still swollen a little bit. Mine is. Um, the other thing you can get is if you don't have nightgown or very loose, long pajama, shirts, any, anything loose. And I got loose jogging, very loose jogging pants, very easy on the waist for just from around the house. Um, for sleeping from the first night, right away, I needed um, one or two pillows one I put on the side, because I sleep on my side, I put it on the side, and even if you don't, even if you sleep on your back, put it on your sides to support your abdomen. You, you see that it helps with the pressure, and 
when you when I turn to the side, I put it there, and I also put one between my knees, and that helps me too. The hardest thing about sleeping is turning from one side to the other because it's very hard to do this without using your abdominals. So just use your elbows, use the hospital bed, the handrail on the side, but at home there's not too much. The pillows help a bit. Um, definitely for me, I couldn't sleep without those pillows. Um, what else do I need to tell you guys? I can walk you through the actual surgery process. So day one of the surgery, I got to the hospital two hours before that. It turned out I had made the mistake of drinking a half a cup of orange juice about four hours before, which I thought it was okay, but it wasn't. It was only clear fluids. You could have up to four hours before the surgery. And because of that, even though it was just three or four sips, they had to delay my surgery by two hours. So they called the other lady that was supposed to be after me. They called her early into the hospital. They took her early. She had a shorter surgery to begin with. So everything at the end worked out. But please don't make that mistake like me. It was really dumb of me to do this. You can have apple juice and water and clear things up to four hours. Nothing after that. Um, so they... They gave me, once I got there, they gave me the robe, the nightgown, everything to change into. And as soon as I did that, they had me say goodbye to my family, basically. I went with them to the pre-op room in which they just gave me some kind of an IV to relax my nerves a little bit because I was a bit nervous. And some other, they hooked me to the IV for antibiotics. Um, my anesthesiologist was there and a nurse. And then, before you know it, they were wheeling me into the operations room. And I was kind of scared. <laughs> um, so all of a sudden I was there, I could see you know, the big circular lights on the ceiling. And I knew, oh man, this is it. And my surgeon was there, that I had met before, of course. And everybody introduced themselves to me, and they asked me to say what's my full name, birthday, oh, sorry. And um, and then I, I, I just kept telling them, could you guys let me know before you, gi you give me the anesthetic, before I fall asleep, I want to know at which point you're giving it to me. They said, yeah, 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 we will. And so they said, okay, now this is an oxygen mask. We're going to put it over you. So I said, okay. So they put the oxygen mask over me. That's the last thing I remember. I don't even remember taking a breath after that was crazy the next thing I remember <clears throat> I was in the post-op room and there was a nurse next to me and I opened my eyes and she said surgery is over so <clears throat> I couldn't believe it that they didn't tell me when the anesthesia was going in and uh, but I'm kind of glad I didn't know because I would have kind of panicked thinking oh no this is it this is it um, so I didn't feel anything I didn't feel going to sleep I didn't feel anything nothing at all just waking up that's it so I was just like I was so happy and relieved that it was over and after that I was in that room for about an hour they monitor all your vitals everything was fine I don't know I'm getting emotional now then they took me into my room recovery room and that's when my family was able to come. My two kids and my husband came to see me. <clears throat> um, I was in a semi-private room. I wanted a private, but they were all taken. Uh, please get a private if you can. It's just so much more restful. I had the IVs, the catheter. The catheter stayed to go pee for the first day. They took it took it out the next morning and I asked them if they can leave it longer because I really didn't want to get up to have to pee because you can feel the pain and the pressure I don't want I didn't want to have to move but they said no it's doctor's orders it has to come out it has to come out so they took it out and then a couple hours later I had to get up and pee and that was the first time I got up so they helped me get up so first of all in my bed I had a button on one side for the medication for that hydromorphine 
I can press it all I want. I cannot overdose on it. They monitor how much, you know, there's a limit of how many times, whatever, it, it gets released. Um, and then the other button was for the nurse. So I asked the nurse to come to help me get up, to go to the washroom. She didn't come in the washroom with me, but I had to drag the IV stand thing with the wheels. I carried that with me to the washroom and that kind of helped me for support. Um, so just, you know, going down very slowly, sitting on the toilet for the first time. It was a little bit challenging. Just take your time. Try not to use your abs, use your arms and your legs when you're getting up from sitting position. Just use those buttocks, muscles, and not your abs. For the hospital, what I needed to bring, they told me to bring toothbrush, pajamas, nightgown, all these things, soap. I did bring them, but I didn't need them. The only thing I really needed was slippers. It's the most important thing. The most important is slippers to go to the washroom. Otherwise, what are you going to wear? Your shoes, you, can, you cannot bend over. You need slippers. Um... They gave me the nightgown and the rope. There was already soap in the toilet. I did not, in the washroom, I mean, I did not take a shower there. There was a shower room. There was no way. I'm taking a shower uh, when I can barely stand up and walk. That wasn't going to happen. So I just used the paper towels in the bathroom. I got them a little bit wet. And I just cleaned my armpits with it. That's what I did. And that helped. Um, and there was no way I was going to stand and brush my teeth when I'm in all this pain. So slippers, earplugs, super important for me anyways, earplugs. And I have those blindfolds or whatever you call them to, to darken your, you know, so you can sleep. Um, it is light there in the hospital, people are coming in and out and it's, you just want to make it as comfortable as possible for you to sleep. Sleep is so important. The two most important things for your recovery are sleep and good food like fibers. These are the two most important. You cannot go without either one. Every morning when I wake up now, I am feeling so much better than the day before. It's amazing. It's like a huge difference. And in, in the morning, my stomach is not as bloated. There's like no pain, basically no pain. It's amazing. And I just feel so rested, full of energy, um, huge difference from the day before. But towards the end of the day, you're starting to feel it, especially if you're overdoing it. So resting and sleeping and the good fiber food for recovery and for constipation. If you can try, don't take the pain medicine past the fourth or fifth day, the strong ones I'm talking about, the narcotics, because they do constipate. So if you can handle the pain with just Advil or Tylenol, then do that, because I think that's the one of the other reasons I haven't had the constipation problem as badly, is because I didn't take the narcotics past the first day after coming home, so a total of three or four days max. Um, that really helped. Um, what else? I didn't need to read anything or bring anything for reading. I brought something, but I couldn't read in the hospital because you're just so tired and you're on narcotics and you don't want to rest anything on your stomach, any books and stuff. So for me, that wasn't an issue. I was just resting and napping. I was in and out of sleep. Apparently, I was saying some funny st stuff to my family the first day or the surgery day after the surgery. When I was a little bit high, I guess. The hospital gave me underwear to wear when I was there, which I didn't know about. And that was pretty cool. The underwear there was so comfortable. It was disposable underwear. It was those white kind of boy shorts, a little bit longer than that underwear. And it was made of like a pantyhose fabric, like nylon, nylons pantyhose and they put a pad on me because I needed a pad for the first two or three days there was just a little bit of leaking 
just a little bit of discharge, nothing big, not like a heavy period or anything. But it was so comfortable that I asked them if I can take a couple pairs home. So they gave me a couple of pairs and I, that's what I actually wore at home for the first uh, couple of days. And then I just threw them out. It was awesome because they're very loose, very comfortable in the stomach. So if they give you those, ask for like maybe a couple of pairs for at home to help yourself. Um, what else helped me? Uh, I got cranberry juice and plum juice or whatever it is called. Plum juice, I bought it beforehand, anticipating constipation. And I had a couple of glasses of it. Cranberry juice, of course, is very good for to prevent urinary tract infections, which I've had before a few times. And after my first C-section, I had that. And that usually happens because of the catheter inside you. There's some bacteria that goes in there. And so you want to make sure you're drinking a lot of water, some cranberry juice to flush anything out, any bacteria that might be getting in your bladder. Um, I'm having absolutely no bladder problems. I'm able to go to the washroom normally. I'm able to, you know, hold my pee longer actually now. Um, it's great. And the other thing is drink a lot of tea, which I think I mentioned, but just something or something warm. It helps with constipation. Um, besides that, I don't know what else. I think I've covered all the major things. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please comment on the video below and I'll try to answer as best I can. Uh, again, the number two most important things are good diet. Don't get tempted to eat bad stuff. I was pretty lucky in my hospital, which was North York General Hospital in Ontario, Canada. They gave me a menu for each meal. So I always picked the healthiest things, even if I wanted to eat something else. So in, for, let's say in the morning, I would have a bran muffin. For lunch, it was wild rice with some vegetables, broccoli, and either salmon or chicken. I stayed away from you know, white rices, potatoes, anything too starchy, any kind of desserts, unhealthy desserts besides fruits. I stayed away from that. Just force yourself because it's just going to be so much easier for you, for your recovery. And so the good food and the rest and the sleep. Make sure you have a good sleep. So take those pain medications um, for the first few nights for sure. Take them to sleep well. So I hope you get, I hope this was has been an encouraging video with a few helpful hints and tips as to how things went and how to recover better. And um, I hope you guys have an amazing recovery. Bye bye.